Two large storms will be coming to the United States over the next few days, one of which will bring the potential for severe weather, including significant damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes. And on top of that, major flooding will continue to be a possibility. The second storm is going to be a potential tropical cyclone in the Gulf over the next few days that could impact areas like the Gulf Coast and Florida and may bring the potential for significant flooding, maybe even some storm surge and possibly high winds. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today, beginning with the Great Plains, which is an area that we've had a lot of storms in just over the last 24 hours, mainly back over in the northern plains. But later today, we are expecting this low pressure system to move into South Dakota and Minnesota, which will bring the potential for two different areas of severe weather, one of which will be in the central plains and another one back over in the Midwest, which could bring the potential for high winds, hail, and as well as tornadoes and then tomorrow we are talking about more severe weather in the same exact area where all hazards of severe weather will once again be on the table back along the east coast and into the southeast we've had major flooding ongoing back over along the east coast especially in new jersey and pennsylvania over the last 24 hours even back over in virginia in petersburg we actually had a flash flood emergency yesterday and then back over in the southeast this is where we are currently watching invest 93l which may become our next tropical system as it continues to meander to the west and then eventually approaches the gulf coast by wednesday and thursday and these are some of the photos that were taken yesterday from the major flooding that happened along the east coast this is back over in mount joy pennsylvania where around nine inches of rain fell just crazy sights here and then on top of that we had major flooding in new jersey this is in scotch plains new jersey many cars were submerged by water because of how fast the waters rose we had several inches of rain also in new jersey some spots like this area here picked up as much as six to eight inches of rain in a very very short amount of time and unfortunately more major flooding is a possibility over the next few days including areas like florida and the gulf coast where a tropical storm may form over the next few days this is what it looks like on infrared imagery this morning you can actually see the spin right now just off the east coast of florida this is almost a tropical system it's just not really closed off and it's not really that organized as of right now but we've seen a pretty consistent spiral here on infrared imagery over the last 24 hours throughout the daytime today this will move across florida very low chance it develops today but i think by tomorrow as it moves into the gulf there is a chance it develops as it eventually goes towards areas like the gulf coast and at this point the national hurricane center has about a 50 50 chance of this tropical system actually developing as it moves into the gulf over the next couple of days it will likely make landfall by thursday so assuming this thing develops it will be impacting the gulf coast on thursday more than likely around louisiana southern mississippi or southern alabama and if this thing does form we could be talking about some really major flooding potential back over in louisiana in Mississippi. However, if it doesn't form, the flooding would be more to a minimum, but there could still be a potential for some localized flooding along the Gulf Coast. So a lot of stuff we need to watch for over the next few days. Generally speaking, though, a hurricane is very unlikely at this time. I think, if anything, we get a low to medium grade tropical storm if this does form. And we haven't looked at these in quite some time, but these are the spaghetti models, basically giving us an indication of where this tropical system may end up tracking over the next few days. The bulk of the computer models do keep this in the Gulf at least for about 24 Four hours or so basically beginning late tonight rolling all the way through late tomorrow night and then if this were to make landfall as a tropical storm it would make landfall sometime on Thursday anywhere from western Louisiana all the way back towards eastern Mississippi but the most likely landfall location being near New Orleans so we need to keep a very close eye on this obviously because it could bring some big threats but the biggest threat being flash flooding and also rip currents and one thing that is interesting is that most computer models are not really indicating any development out of this tropical system this week even though the environment is is very favorable in the Gulf with low wind shear and also very warm water temperatures. But if that disorganized area of thunderstorm activity can become organized tomorrow, it may become a tropical storm before making landfall in Louisiana sometime on Thursday or even as far east as Mississippi. But generally speaking, the biggest concern out of this would be flooding. This is actually the icon model when it did show this becoming at least a middle grade tropical storm, which was one computer model run ago. But I do want to give you an idea of the potential of what this could bring if this were to become a tropical storm and obviously this is not something that you want to see we do not want to be seeing any more than four inches of rain in any of these areas at this point and if we were to see a tropical cyclone develop we could easily see a widespread area between four to eight inches of rainfall and localized areas higher than that so we definitely need to keep an eye on this but keep in mind if this does not become a tropical storm it'll likely bring no more than just a few inches of rain maybe some localized spots over five inches of rain now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days beginning with today which is tuesday and we now have 
a level three out of five enhanced risk of severe weather in Nebraska. Slight risk goes all the way from the upper peninsula of Michigan back into northern Kansas and another little slight risk in Wyoming. And then marginal threat from Nevada all the way back into Michigan, where all hazards of severe weather are going to be on the table today. The biggest concern will be damaging winds, which could be significant at times. We could have damaging winds between 60 to 80 miles per hour this afternoon in Nebraska and southern South Dakota. Large hail is also a possibility, but by no means are we really expecting anything larger than the size of golf balls. And then a few tornadoes are possible. I think our main tornado corridor will be in the central plains where there will likely be a tornado or two out of our initial supercells that develop during the mid-afternoon hours. And then that tornado threat will start to decrease. And then another area we're keeping an eye on is from eastern Minnesota back into the upper peninsula of Michigan, where a couple of tornadoes will be a possibility. There is a chance of a live stream today. We'll be on standby, so make sure you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live. On Wednesday, we have another risk of severe weather, which by the looks of it might not look super concerning, but I do have some concern for the Midwest. Right now, there is a slight risk in place for southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, and eastern Iowa. Obviously, very populated here. We have over 15 million people that live in that slight risk of severe weather. And then the marginal threat goes from Michigan back into Colorado. The biggest concern on Wednesday will once again be damaging winds, but there will be a remnant mesoscale convective vortex on Wednesday. And depending on the intensity of that, we may see a couple or even a few tornadoes back over here in eastern Iowa near Davenport, back over towards Milwaukee, and even just outside of Chicago. So in the event that we get any tornado warnings in this area, we will likely be live on this channel tomorrow. So make sure you're subscribed and click the bell icon so you're notified if we go live. And then on Thursday, we at the moment have no risk of severe weather outlined. However, we'll likely see a marginal risk at some point down the road. One area I'm keeping an eye on for Thursday would be the Gulf Coast, where that tropical system, if it were to develop, even if it doesn't develop, we may see an isolated tornado risk back over in Louisiana, Florida Panhandle, and even southern Alabama and Mississippi. So definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware. So here's the timing for today, beginning with the central and northern plains. We are expecting storms to fire up right near a boundary, right around 1 to 2 o'clock this afternoon. The initial concern with these storms will be hail and the potential for a couple of tornadoes. And if these storms can stay discreet near that boundary, they may produce tornadoes throughout a good chunk of the afternoon hours. And we might even see a localized tornado outbreak. I wouldn't rule it out, but it's going to depend on storm mode. By around 5 o'clock, we may see another storm or two back over in western or central Nebraska that produce another tornado threat. But really by 6 to 7 o'clock, a lot of the storm activity will become clustered together. And I do expect damaging winds to become the biggest concern out of these storms by around 6 to 7 o'clock tonight. And then by 8, 9 o'clock, storms will continue to move across Nebraska. They will be going towards Omaha and they will be going towards Kansas City. But generally speaking, this line of storms will fall apart and there won't be much left when it comes to damaging winds. I think gusty winds will be really the biggest concern. And then back over in the Midwest for today, we are expecting a few storms to fire off right around 3 to 4 o'clock. Biggest concern will be damaging winds, but we may see a localized tornado threat take place just north there of the Twin Cities, depending on storm mode. By 5 to 6 o'clock, storms will continue just off to the north and west of the Twin Cities. May see a few storms there near Minneapolis try to make their way into town, but I think the general threat, if anything gets there, will be wind. And then by 8 9 o'clock, we'll be still seeing some damaging winds out there across northern Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan, and then the storms will eventually fall apart as we go into the overnight hours. And then on Wednesday, there will be a remnant mesoscale convective vortex that'll come from the storms that we are seeing today in the central plains, and this could spark the potential for a localized tornado threat and also a wind threat across the Midwest. By around 3 to 4 o'clock, we are expecting the potential for a supercell or two to fire off back over in eastern Iowa and southern Wisconsin, with the potential for damaging winds and a couple of tornadoes being a possibility. But by the time this becomes clustered together, the tornado threat will really quickly subside. So really overall, the biggest concern with this will be tornadoes probably from about 1 until about 5 o'clock, and then after 5 o'clock, we may have a low tornado risk, but damaging winds should be, become the primary concern back over near Chicago and also near Milwaukee by around 6 to 7 o'clock. So generally speaking, this is mostly a daytime threat. Luckily, it's not an evening or overnight threat here, but definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware. Again, there is a chance of a live stream. And then on Thursday, more scattered severe weather is a possibility back in the Ohio Valley. I know the Storm Prediction Center doesn't have a risk right now in this area, but I do think damaging winds, hail, and maybe even a tornado or two will be a possibility. And then beyond the next few days, we are expecting the threat of severe weather to continue into the weekend, mainly in the Midwest in the Ohio Valley, where isolated severe weather events may take place. By Sunday and Monday, we'll be watching for another storm system to move over the northern plains. That might bring some localized severe weather events to areas from uh, Kansas back into North Dakota. And then by Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday of next week, there will likely be at least some severe
severe weather back over in the northern plains in the Midwest. And then beyond that, it's very uncertain what's going to happen. I do think we're going to continue to see an active weather pattern into the very end of July. However, things do not look to be very certain at this point, whether it'll be very active or it'll be calm. But once details become more resolved on the end of July's weather forecast, we will be the first to let you know. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. There is a chance of a live stream later today for severe weather coverage, so make sure you click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live. Also, don't forget to check out our merch at shopmaxvelocity.net. This is one of the best ways to support what we do here on this channel. We have our Supercell collection out now on the front page, and we also have our Shame collection if you scroll down just a little bit. This is a brand new collection that resembles people parking under overpasses, which is obviously very dangerous during severe weather. So definitely check it out, and we'll see you guys all again in the next video or live stream.